Tammy? Yes. We're ready to go. Okay. I'm in my comfortable era. Yes? Yeah, I wear sweatpants today. Well, I think you're in a comfortable era in your life. Do you think that? Miss Trixie Mattel, Miss Trixie Mattel, ladies and gentlemen, Trixie Mattel. Woo! Wonderful to have you here. I'm so happy to spend time with you. I feel like we had a time in our life when we saw each other all the time, mm -hmm. and then COVID happened, and I haven't, I don't think I've seen you in person since 2019. But the first time you saw me in person was there, and we were doing that show together with Alaski, and then we were up in Portland, Oregon. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. yes, that was my first like big girl travel get on a plane, like drag mm -hmm. gig, and it was me, you, and Alaska in mm -hmm. Portland on New Year's Eve. Correct. And I remember the poster was hand drawn. Do you remember the poster? Yes, that's done by Menorah. Yes. Menorah. And it was like you on a phone and the phone was a rubber chicken. Mm -hmm. It was a great poster. And I remember I was so, I couldn't believe I was meeting you and we went to lunch together and we were just instant friends. And you got a postcard later, remember that? Yes, uh -huh. I do. <laughs> and, then, and then do you remember that dressing room though? Remember yes. me and Alaska literally in a dark hallway? And it was yeah. like, I thought like I'm doing a show with Tammy in Alaska. I've arrived. Well, and it was like. <laughs> It was like a dark, wet hallway, and we were all like well, in our panties. And all well, I work. thought it was, you know, no tea, no shade. I did think that maybe it was one of, you know, Alaska's costumes or something. <laughs> the dirty, wet floor. <laughs> no, oh, I didn't think about that. I would have said something. I don't want to slip. It was a magical evening, though. No, it was an awful place. That it was, though. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was horrible. I remember being slapped in the face with reality of like, wow, now that this is my first like grown-up gig, and then those meet and greets sometimes, they're exhausting. And the things people come up and say, you you know, we're not counselors sometimes, you have to tell them, right? Uh, yes, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Tammy, no one's ever come up to me and said, I love your drag, mm -hmm. or you did a great show tonight. Uh -huh. They go, oh, Trixie, my mom was murdered. Really? Yes, and they go straight to like, my father uh -huh. lost both his legs mm. to cancer. To cancer. Can I get a picture? I don't know what it is, it's straight to like, well, next time, tell them to hashtag Gay Gibson and check out my friend Gay Gibson, my friend that was in the wheelchair. That's right. Uh-huh. Give her some love. She's, she's gone now. No telling if she's in heaven or hell. We'll throw one up there and we'll throw one down here. Well, she had, she had, had you know, anyways. Do you believe in heaven and hell? I don't believe in either. I don't either. Mm -mm. I feel, and this is maybe too optimistic, I feel that to believe that we are in a waiting room for something better is mm -hmm. to ignore how great your life can be right now. That's a great oh, observation. Well, I'm just going to be a good person now because later everything's going to be great. It's like, uh -huh. what if you can just, things can be great now? Yes. What if this is heaven? Or we're all just complaining? Well, it can be heaven or it can be hell. You got to make a decision. That's the thing, right? Life is yin and yang. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you. And if God's out there, he's not white. <laughs> he's not white and he's not worried about like your Oscar. I know, that's you true. You know what I mean? Thank God. When I, if you won a major award for acting or singing or something, who would you really think? Like, who would you really? I think of those babies that get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I think about people's, people that are killed all the time and <laughs> in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. No, you're I right. think about how trolls were called trolls because they didn't practice Christianity. Clock some tea. <laughs> you're telling me that these aren't Christians? Oh no, they were people up in the mountains. I just feel, <laughs> I just feel that it's, that's honestly looks like my inbred family members. They're not inbred. I mean. You think that was because of colonization? I think that everybody in my own family is so unappealing that even their own family won't fuck them. Hey, you can't talk like that about your family. Mm, they're that's not, not going nice. to listen to I this. watched your documentary. My documentary? Documentary, yes. <laughs> documentary, so to speak, yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're fine. They, they're great, but they, they're not going to watch this. But no, they're lovely. And we your love grandmother, them. you told me about her, how she chopped, she, there was a deer she one. She chopped my legs off. <laughs> not your legs, come on. This isn't misery, is it? So one time you're, there was a deer that had been hit, and your grandmother, she ate it. She <laughs> cut, cut it up. And what happened? Tell me the story. Yeah, so I'm from Northeast Wisconsin, where there's mm -hmm. a lot, there's a large populace of white-tailed deer. White-tailed deer. And... Um, I've hit four deer in my life. In high school, I hit four different deer. Dangerous. They're everywhere. I mean, they jump out in the street, right? Dangerous. And I drove a 94 Dodge Intrepid, and I hit a deer, and a big part of my fender broke off and stuck in the deer, and I didn't know what to do, so I drove home, and I was like, where am I in it, deer? And I come home from school that day, mm -hmm. and the fender was laying on the kitchen table covered in blood and deer fur, and she was like, well, I went and got it for you. 
I'm like, oh. But it's, it's really dangerous to hit animals like that, like hitting a javelina, like where I'm from in Texas. Yeah. Um, or there's a lot of deers, but you're lucky to be alive, you know? Uh, yeah, they jump. Deer are huge. White-tailed deer are huge. You hit mm -hmm. a deer full speed, I mean, you come through the windshield, like antlers coming through the windshield, stabbing the trachea. Like, like that movie, Antlers? I've never seen I that. I can't watch it. I'm from Milwaukee, mm. and there is a team called the Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks, Bucks, and their their slogan is "Fear the Deer." Fear the deer. Doesn't that sound kind of evil? Fear the deer, fuck a queer. <laughs> exactly. Let's have some beer. Hey ho, the gang's all here. Let's have pretzels. Let's have beer. Uh -huh. Oh my, oh my God, Tammy. Yes. I have to show you something that happened last night. Okay. So last night I DJed at Heart in West Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody in the audience knows that I love you, and they know that I love the um. The dead body story. Dead bodies, yes. Okay, I'm DJing. I look out in the audience mm -hmm. and look what I see. Look what I see. Somebody holds this sign up. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Tell them what the sign says. You gotta says. tag me. I found a dead body. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it was a gay guy and he was dancing the music holding up a sign that said I found a dead body. Well, you better tag me, girl. I should tag you. That's right. But publicity, I was, publicity. But I was like, if nobody knows. Oh gosh. Oh. Uh -huh. if, vicious, yeah. if people don't know about that clip, uh -huh. They just see a gay guy in the club with a sign that says, I found a dead body. Well, so they're like, okay, Jeffrey Dahmer energy. Well, I'm really glad to know that I set a trend. You really did. I mean, and people like those morbid stories. And if they like those morbid stories, I'm going to tell them more. I just used one in my show. Oh, hold on. A plane's going by a jet. We're right next to the Burbank airport. Do you fly into the Burbank airport? You know, we've done it a couple times, three times maybe. And I know that it's faster, but usually it means you have to connect somewhere. Mm. Like LAX, you can get direct flights. Correct. And then you feel more like a star though, don't you? I mean, it's an airport. But that's a disgusting disgrace of an airport. I wish those Hare Krishnas were still out there giving away beads or whatever. And the, LA, the LAX Delta mm -hmm. Sky Club um, hangs interesting art and they change it out frequently. Well, I haven't been in there yet. Haven't flown with you enough. Ah, oh, we got, I know, we gotta do, <laughs> we gotta do another tour. Cause I'm DJing now, mm -hmm. we gotta do another club tour together. And you can play my singles. Yes. Ah, totally. Ooh, I like that sexy, sexy orangutan. Hashtag boycott palm oil, hashtag save the orangutans. Tell me about your makeup line. Well, I started a makeup company about two and a half years ago mm -hmm. because I love makeup. I've been a product junkie for forever. Product junkie. Yes, so even when I started doing drag, even when I had very little pocket money, I would be like, at the CVS looking at the newest Revlon products. I just love makeup. makeup. And so then I was like, well, how come you can get really cool pro products at like Nigel's that are all in like black packaging, simple, 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 but you love the formula. Right. And then there's fun packaging, but the formula's not great. Right. So I was like, what if I could do something where we'd have really fun packaging and then really good formulas? And then it caught on and if, I mean, we've been open almost two years, th three, almost three years now, which is so crazy. I mean, we hire a new person every like, four months, we're constantly growing. We're almost, you were just over at the warehouse with me. Mm -hmm. We're almost out of space in there. We're probably gonna have to move. That's great. T yeah. for quality. Quality. Trixie and quality. Small batch, baked in small ovens by grandmas. Oh really, grandmas, I'm glad you got them working. So many people discrimi against, discriminate against the elderly. That's why I always have them in my show, The Browns, by the way. Elderly people, I love elderly people. Yes, the gentleman who plays your dad. Uh huh. I met him at your Tammy 20 year, Anniversary? Was it your 20-year anniversary mm -hmm. party? He was so nice. Oh, he's the best. He's Roy. Roy, yeah, yeah. he's the best. He's really cool. And then also there's, um, who do we also invite in? I've invited in, well, I have a friend right now. She's going to be 80. But she's one of my longtime friends, Sonia. Katya? No, oh. not Katya, please. <laughs> um, but she has dementia. And now she Katya. believes, <laughs> no, she believes that I'm her boyfriend. <laughs> Oh, no. And I, I hope it's not Katya because, God, she has those big, strong arms, and I kind of like them sometimes, mealy feely. <laughs> she's got a really buff Katya. Yeah, I saw that. She's sober, eating a lot of food, and working out a lot, so she's like Jack. I mean, she works out with a trainer almost every single day. Well, I saw her here. She was throwing me around in the Browns. Yeah. She was choreographed, though, really well by Laganji Estrangi. Yeah, and she's she's in her, like, big air, because Katya's one of those people. I mean, you have a really fast metabolism, too, right? I do my best. But like, do you, have, is, do you have to eat a lot to gain weight? I do intermittent fasting from time to time and I juice most days and I love tea over coffee any days. Yeah, that's a good trick. Tea is a good diet trick because it's not good to not Coffee eat. gets you going too. Yeah, that's a good point as well. You know, I was laughing because I was thinking about that movie, um, Girls Will Be Girls. 
amazing. Spoiler alert. Amazing. Amazing right there. Barla Jean Merman. It's uh -huh. Coco. Edie. Uh -huh. And Coco. And Jack Potnick. Uh-huh. Yeah, Edie. Do you, know Jack many, Potnick. do you know how many gay people, including drag queens, have not seen that movie? Have you guys seen... Girls it Will Be is Girls? one of the funniest... I'm sorry. I love Don't Chuang apologize. Fu. I love Chuang Fu. I love Tootsie. I love uh -huh. all the drag movies. That movie is actually starring drag queens, and it is... Hilarious. Speaking of drag movies and people exploiting themselves, Tootsie is one of my favorites, right? But Mr. Mr. Oh gosh, I can't even. Is Dustin it Hoffman. Oh, Dustin, yeah, Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman. He was showing off his. Sean Penn played the other one, Milk. Now. Um, oh, that's right. And there's two versions of the Milk. There's also one with Eric Roberts, Julie Roberts' brother. It's really good, by the well, way. Well, there's two percent in skin. Oh God, I do <laughs> like cocoa milk. Oh. oh. So, you know, when you're sucking on cocoa Peru's titties. <gasps> I love it. You know, I had my first, like, uh, it was in Portland again. I uh -huh. always meet the icons in Portland. Mm -hmm. I did a gig with her on a boat. It was so surreal. I'm like, oh my God. Coco? Coco? Yes. And you know, you love her. Oh God, I love everything. Her. Kelly loves her. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy when we get to work with these people that are like, oh my God, when we start drag, we're like, well, that person's like amazing. I'm going back to P-Town because I haven't been able to see her show either. I've been out of town when it happens, just like your show. But um, I'm going to go back to P-Town to see her at the Pilgrim House where they're putting me up and everything. And mm -hmm. I'm going to stay there and see her show. I'm so excited. Are, are you doing P-Town next year? Yes, of course. We should do, here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come into town and we should do like at the, um, what's that? Is it Velvet? The theater. Velvet? The club? Why Velvet? You want I'll, to, I'll do, okay, I'll we'll DJ do it. and you can do a club number. Okay, let's do it. We do a do night it. together. Okay, let's do it. It'll be so fun. Okay, I miss do doing P-Town. Why don't we just do the main theater? Okay, we could do a real we show. We could do that. I mean, everybody's doing it. Are you talking about the town hall? Yeah, the town hall. It's hot. I want to do. Hot, uh, who cares if it's hot? We're hot on stage. What do you expect? All they right. bring out. It's literally the biggest venue in town, and they bring out box fans. Oh, I don't. I want all. I like. I want to start a Doctors Without Borders where I help drag shows that have poor air. Honey, conditioning. let me tell you something. I have invested in an aircon in hell. That's an air conditioning system. Uh -huh. That's what they call it down under. So I'm not worried about it. Okay. I also have invested in a high-rise building. I'm on the 29th floor <laughs> penthouse view overlooking the seat of fire. And you can sit there and sip crisp champagne with me. <laughs> See, that sounds great. Watch out, what are those, our sisters called? Dragulas or? Oh, the spooky people. Spooky. Have you judged Dragula? No, but I've worked with them many a time. The and they said I had a really good energy, but they don't hire me anymore. You know, they hire other people, but that's okay. Look, remember when we did that Halloween show together and you were a Joker? Oh, yeah. And you were, it was like a, um, it was like a Jack Nicholson Joker, too. Yeah, of course, that's my only Joker. It was so good. Because, you know, isn't um, Heath Ledger dead? And wasn't Jared Leto a flop? But I'll tell you, I did like Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of his Joker. You did? Yes, I did. Do you think I am, have bad taste if I liked the Jared Leto Joker? No, that's your opinion. Okay. You know what I mean? I watched it because I know, and I was like, I think this is fun. I mean, uh -huh. a weird, I mean, we've never seen a Joker that's like, I don't know, like that. And I, I was fine with that. I've not seen the Joaquin Phoenix one because I heard that like all the incel straight guys liked it. And I was like, well, I'm going to hate that. Incel. Yeah, like the people who like, you know, like super right wing, like Trumpy people like. Oh, well, that. if I went on the Snatch Game, you know who I would do? I would, of course, do the Joker, but I guess it's copyrighted. So what I would do is Jack Nicholson. You can't handle the truth. You would do the Pelican Brief, Jack Nicholson? I would just do Jack Nicholson, period. Oh, work. You know. Hey, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to lead us out, Tammy? Huh? Lead us out, thank Trixie, Trixie, anything oh. you want to promote? <sighs> No, um, thank you for listening and, and thank you for having me because anything to make more people listen to this the second it comes out because everybody should listen to you talk about anything. Okay. I would like for you to mention one thing before you quit. Okay. Is how to say hello in Ojibwe, please. Can you speak a little Ojibwe? Say something in Ojibwe, please, and let the people know that you're Ojibwe because we need to promote the nations. Okay, I'm Ojibwe, which is a uh, tribe from Northeast Wisconsin and Canada. It's a tribe known for copper, rice, um, handicrafts, snowshoes, snowshoe dancing. Thank you oh, for I'm sharing, Ojibwe. Ojibwe, woo! woo! And a great, great Ojibwe word, Gawin, is no. no. Gawin. Gawin. When I was little, my grandma would just be like, Gawin, if I was doing something that she didn't like. Gawin. Do you want to say something nice about Laganja Stranja real fast? Of course. Laganja has choreographed one of my music videos. She choreographed the Trixie and Katya live tour. And she is a beacon of positivity 
And she makes anybody feel like they are a professional dancer and she makes them look as good as they can. I mean, imagine being able to move like Laganja and being generous enough to help other people move. And Laganja's a Texan, she's gonna make it better, just like me. Yeah. Texas. <laughs> Applause for the hearing impaired. Yay! Get out of town. I can't m Marvin this Mar Martian. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Well, I mean, there's not really a <laughs> lot to him, but you want to see? <laughs> yeah.